Alrighty, nerds, listen up. Uh, we are watching a super serious movie. Okay, it's serious. His name's Black Dawn. A lot of people die in it, you know? Bad guys. And, well, a few good guys, but you know who doesn't die is Steven Seagal. Shocker. The Invincible Man. I don't know how he manages to escape every movie unscathed. You know, it's almost like he wrote the movie himself to make himself look good or something. Yeah, a crazy idea, I know. But yeah, today on Karate Corner, we are watching Black Dawn, the sequel to The Foreigner, because uh, his character's name is the same, and that's that's it. That's the only similarity. There's no callbacks, nothing like that. Just uh, leather jackets, terrorists, a slowly balding man, and uh, the foolish YouTuber who uh, signed up to watch every single one of these things. And that's something I have to live with. Uh, so let's get to it, because this is Red Eye Reviews. Let me take you to somewhere in Eastern Europe. Spare no one but you love. Or we die slaves. Spare no one. Or we die slaves. Spare no one. Or we die slaves. I have no idea who made the decision to loop the same two lines over and over and call the music, but they were probably paid. Poorly. Any hoozles, the CIA was spying on this terrorist group, and during this bizarre intro, the uh, leader gets shot. We assume by the CIA, the bad guys are trying to gather a ton of money to buy some nuclear bomb as kind of redemption for their boss getting shot. They want to blow some people up. So they know they need to do a couple of well-paying heists to achieve this goal. This poor guard was given a gun full of blanks. Uh, that's the only excuse I have for missing so many times. And I mean, he hits nothing. He fires how many times? A lot. Doesn't, yeah, it doesn't hit anything. We see Seagal, a.k.a. Jonathan Cold, a.k.a. Johnny Slowhands. Uh, he has presumably gone rogue from the CIA, but he's probably deep, deep undercover. You know, something like that. He's a good guy. He is hired to break this guy out of prison. So he pretends to be a doctor, goes in, sees this patient. The guards are like, nothing suspicious yet. That's fine. He then injects him with uh, some random drugs. Guards are like, yeah, it seems like legit doctor stuff. The dude immediately starts having like a crazy seizure and foaming at the mouth. Seagal says they need to transfer the patient if they want him to live. And they're like, oh, we don't, we don't really have the authority to move him. I mean, he's under super strict lockdown because he's like a really bad terrorist guy. Seagal says he has the authority and then they just go with that. One of them's even so convinced he climbs into the ambulance with him. Wait a minute, what's going on? You're not a doctor. I can't be a pilot. I can't be a doctor. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought that was pretty obvious. He didn't even introduce himself, and the one thing he did to the patient gave him a seizure. But anyways, the guy wakes up and realizes that John successfully broke him out of prison. Do you know what a little fat boy is? Okay, you know what? You can't wake up and just come right out and ask that. Let's be more sensitive here, sir. He just broke you out of prison. Been away so long, it even feels good to be stuck in LA traffic. And don't change the subject. Also, there's literally no traffic on this road, so I don't even know why you'd bring that up. But anyway, they get to the hideout, and uh, secret undercover agent Amanda Stewart sees him and, of course, knows who he is. He taught me everything I know. Yeah, of course he did. Why not? He's probably trained everybody. I mean, hell, he taught me how to make YouTube videos, which is why they're so good, right? Any movement? Nothing yet. No? Okay, hold on. Stop. Stop. Shut your mouth. We're not going any further until you explain where the hell you are. Is this a mannequin factory? Why? Does this further the plot any, or is it like the only building the production staff could rent for next to zero dollars? I'm going to call Greer and fill him in. Don't change the subject. Also, you didn't even type a full phone number here. There was only nine beeps. I counted. Fill him in. Quick tip, if you're going to put in fake phone beeps in your movie, give us ten of them. You know, or seven, if it's local. I don't know who you're calling, but maybe not nine. Meanwhile, the other gang needs more money to buy their nukes, so they rob a jewelry store. It's big. See how much bigger it is than the one your boyfriend bought you? But size isn't everything. Believe me, I know. Yeah, what are you talking about? 
Thank God we cut that conversation off. But this works. They get a bunch of diamonds. They peace out pretty easily. Kill some innocent people, but they're bad guys. We expect that. Meanwhile, the other other gang is gathering the nuclear device from a dude who works at a testing facility. Based on the MK54 design, but with 23 microprocessors and 8 charges. And by opening this case, I have just exposed us all to very dangerous levels of radiation. Also, I love that Seagal nods here like he totally just verified this device was real from way over there. You claim to be an expert in custom nuclear devices, sir. But yeah, the deal goes down. But he's not dumb, you know? He won't give them the password until he gets to his car with all the money. Because he isn't stupid and he knows that they're going to try to kill him if he just gives it to him now. So he does a smart thing. He lets them follow him to his car. He then hands the password to him and then they kill him. See, it worked out much better this way. So yeah, they get the nuclear device and the password. They check out the schematics. And apparently the password to nuclear schematics is six characters. I'm pretty sure my Minecraft password is more secure than that, but that's fine. So the terrorists who want the bomb and have the money meet the gang who have the bomb and want the money. Then at roughly the same time, this dude gets jumped to the Nightmare Factory. And Amanda Stewart gets captured by the gang with a nuclear device. Directional mic, telescopic zoom. You spooks are all the same. Also, not to throw you under the bus, because it sounds like you want people to think you know what you're talking about, but directional mics and telephoto lenses, those are the exact things journalists use. What did you think they used? Disposable cameras and, like, cups with string or something? But now Seagal sees his dilemma with either keeping his cover or saving his old friend. So, yeah, he rescues his friend. A bunch of the gang members get killed in the process. We get a real solid green screen. Shame you don't. I mean, what was that? How to surrender to the bad guy 101? The truck is about to crash, so she jumps out of the truck, and we don't see Seagal jump out, but the truck explodes, and then he's he's just, he's there. He's fine. I can only think that Seagal just didn't want to be seen falling or rolling. Well, okay, sorry. He didn't want his stunt double to be seen falling or rolling because it doesn't look cool. So he just sort of, like, shows up afterwards. He, like, teleports. We move past it. They just say, well, he's a super spy, right? That makes sense. They get into another vehicle by just, like, willing the lock open. I'm not really sure what she does here. She just sort of, like, points at the lock really closely and it just gives into peer pressure. They then find the car keys in the place that we all keep our car keys, the visor. Because, yeah, every movie puts their keys up there. I really need to know, has this ever been a real thing? Have any of you put your keys up there? Let me know if you do, because you probably don't own a car anymore. So they go to the secret base, they discover the dead agent, but before they can really make heads or tails of that, another CIA agent shows up. Pearson called me in. What happened here? Why don't you tell us? No, don't do it! It's pretty clear he's a bad guy, but we're not supposed to know that quite yet. But a couple of people get killed in here while uh, the group escapes. You all right, man? I'm good, but there's some people up there that are no good. Not doing too good up there. <laughs> Who is this good Samaritan? This like random construction worker shows up and asks if he can help. And Zagal's like, uh, yeah, there's some people. They're really hurt inside. And he's like, okay, I'm on it. Construction powers away. What a nice guy. The terrorists come up with their plan as to where they uh, want to plant the bomb. Okay, hold on. Let's pause. I just realized who this guy looks like. He's the grown-up version of the kahuna. When he wears that wig... I mean, it's not exact, but it's pretty damn close. And for those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about, go check out my review of Baby Geniuses 2. Go see it for yourself. It's, that's pretty good. And then this gang gets together and they talk about betraying the other gang if things go south. The lady agent goes to find a nuclear inspector that she believes might be involved with the terrorists. Oh, hey, look, it's Commissioner Gordon. Gotham City a little quiet these days, huh? Yeah, Ben Affleck just started using a gun. Turned out that's way more effective than boomerangs, huh? And Seagal goes to talk with this underground hacker guy. Hi, Billy. Calls. We've never seen him before, but we need to find out more about that clearly evil CIA guy and do real talk. Oh, yeah, sure. You mean his uh, personal highly encrypted emails? Is that what you want me to do? Oh, yeah, sure. It's really, it's very simple. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. It's, it might take me a minute. 
Yeah, this dude's probably the best actor in the whole movie. I mean, it's not saying a whole lot, you know, but still, holds his own. Listen, uh -huh. I was wondering if you could do me a big favor. Can you take a look into my old company, check out some supervisors? Why is your voice so high right now? My voice is high. I'm the one with the normal voice. You're the one with the high voice, dude. I have a high voice? You tell me I have a high voice? Yeah, your voice is crazy sounding. Are you kidding me? Okay, now I can't tell if this is voiceover or not. Well, I'll never know if it's voiceover anymore. Maybe he lost his voice back in like 92. We won't know. Let's ponder on that a bit. Meanwhile, Amanda finds the nuclear arms dealer and things do not go well. He gets killed. Well, they roll around the room a lot and then he gets killed. And now she needs to find all that radioactive material and in quite a hurry. I don't think you're actually looking as much as you're just kind of opening everything with a handle. But hey, the speed you're moving, very impressive. But while she is looking, the bad guys show up. So she goes and hides in another room. What's in that room, you might wonder? Well, just two people banging. Yeah. And they didn't notice her. Why did we feel the need to put this scene in the movie? You know, I bet Seagal's pretty jealous right now that he's not the one in that room. So the bad guys break in. Amanda must be a Call of Duty player because she blind fires around a corner and kills three people. That's pretty impressive. And then they just leave her there. Yeah, they take the radioactive material and they just peace out. And they want to go put their bomb together and, you know, blow some stuff up. Seagal shows up and rescues Amanda, who I don't really think she needed rescuing. She's just like laying on the floor, taking a nap. The terrorists go to set the bomb off and they get attacked by the totally, we all knew it, very obvious CIA bad guy. You are here because I put you here. I created Aslan. Hey, uh, hold on. You telling me you wrote the Chronicles of Narnia, bro? But yeah. And then Seagal shows up. We get in a tense little standoff, but Steven obviously knows how to defuse bombs. I mean, he just did it in the movie Ticker. I'll plug that little video real quick. Boom. But I guess in this movie, he doesn't know. Because uh, he shoots everybody, the bomb gets activated. They then head to the roof. And of course there's a helicopter waiting. There's always a helicopter. I started to realize this recently, but I think this is 12 movies in a row that he gets into a helicopter. But anyways, they fly out over the ocean with the nuke. How deep is it? What? How deep do you think the water is here? Okay, first of all, buddy, why in the hell would she know how deep it is? That's good. I was hoping you'd say that. Secondly, I'm pretty sure missiles float because they're airtight. I could totally be wrong, and I am assuming a lot about our little suitcase bomb here, but my money is on that that thing floats. All right, screw me. It doesn't float. That's fine. It can sink. So they save the day, and just like Army of the Dead, they manage to outrun a nuclear blast in a helicopter, and the world is safe for another day. You're gonna call me a friend. You know, normally when people sleep together, they have what, what are you talking about, man? Okay. And you, you just had to sneak one last scene in here? Oh, and by the way, everybody, I just want you all to know, we totally banged. Because I'm a stallion and the ladies love me. But yeah, that's our movie, folks. Uh, that was Black Dawn. The title doesn't make any sense. But the movie didn't either, so it just, yeah, kind of balances out. And now we move on to our favorite segment, Red Eye Reacts. You just have to know who to ask. I heard that. You know, hey, buddy, don't uh, look so tense there. I know it's not your usual trench coat and jean jackets, but you're rocking that suit. Or it's too tight and you can hardly move. Small but powerful, like the heart. A child can carry this. What a very oddly specific way to say that. Okay, real quick, can we just look at this fight? This is cut together in a very weird way. I genuinely don't think he's even in the same room. They just shot him up close a bunch and just cut around it. This is bizarre. I don't know what to tell you. We vowed to be martyrs, not corpses without a cause. That's a good name for a band, Gary. You should write that down. I will. Can you use all of your tricky, dicky, uh, spooky talent that you got there? Uh, what? You better not be fucking with me, man. I kill you. Silence! I kill you! Alrighty, killers, that was a blast. Thank you so much for watching. I am super happy to hear just how much you've all been enjoying the channel and the Karate Corner videos. Up next, we will watch Mercenary for Justice, where he has to break into an Eastern European prison and break out a drug lord's son for a reason. Maybe we'll find out. 
but the cover has helicopters on it, so that's going to make 13 movies in a row that he's flying in one of those things. But please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video, hit the bell, thumbs it up, watch some comments, uh, buy a helicopter, learn to fly one, I don't know. We will see you next time, and until then, stay happy and stay healthy.